so negative goodwill i bought a business combination which was under liquidation so it was a good deal for me you know i made money so it's a 100 crore asset i got at 80 crore 100 crores business value i paid only 30 crores so the 70 crores what is that that is not goodwill right it's called negative goodwill under ifrs so ifrs says that look if you get to negative goodwill please re relook at your asset liability valuations because there is chances are that you will never get to negative goodwill it is very difficult that somebody is going to sell you a business at a cheap price so first you make a reassessment have you done properly if you are confirmed it's fine then it goes to pnl but under ind as this will go to capital, capital reserve. reserve so that's a carve out a difference from ifrs that this will go to your capital reserve while under ifrs it would have gone to pnl so that's a big difference that we are seeing here Is it mandatory under IFRS to take it to? Yeah, there's no choice. You have to okay. take it to PNL. So it says first you make an assessment. Is it really negative? Because nobody is selling you cheap businesses. So if you still conclude it is, then you take it to PNL. Okay. So we talked about business combinations. Just going a little bit more. You acquired initially you had 30 percent. You now acquired another 30. Maybe you got to control. Now you have a business combination. So what happens when acquisitions are done in stages? may obtain control of an acquiring stages by successive purchases of shares commonly referred to as step acquisitions if the acquirer holds a non controlling equity instrument in the acquiry immediately before obtaining control so let's say i have 20% equity instruments earlier i had 20% stake remeasure the investment so the moment i did another 50% or 60% i got to 80 now suddenly i have control earlier it was an associate so that 20% that i had remeasure investments for to fair value on the date of gaining control the moment you got control whatever investments originally you had need to be fair value and the difference goes to your pnl recognize gain loss on measurement to profit and loss so you will spike immediately to fair value the original 20% that you had done 5 years back let's say you had acquired at 200 crores today that 200 crores is worth 500 crores so that 300 that incremental that you are going to do fair value you will say investments debit to pnl gain 300 crores so you are revaluing your original investments the investments was previously classified as again we'll talk to on this on financial instruments but fair value through other comprehensive income any gain loss so what happens under financial instruments you could have you know you get a choice to value investments at fair value and take it to pnl or you could keep it to reserves all the fair value changes given certain parameters met so if originally all fair values you were doing and parking it to reserves that 300 crores which is sitting in reserves will flow through pnl that's what they are saying so under financial instruments if you were doing a fair value and parking everything in reserves and that has to recycle back to pnl now goodwill calculation to follow such valuations again just a one quick example we'll go through investor uh, acquires a 20% ownership interest in investee a service company Uh, at the date the fair value of the investees net identifiable assets is 10 million and the carrying value of those assets is 8 million investor does not have significant influence over the investee thus it treated investments as fair value through other comprehensive income that is nothing but all fair values i will take it to reserves fair value of investments as the date of 31st december was 6 million accordingly the investor recognized unrealized gain of 2.5 million in equity that is the reserves so originally the price was 6 are we saying fair value is 6 million accordingly investor recognized unrealized gain so originally it was around 3.5 he would have acquired you know the gain it is now you know the fair value is 6 million so the 3.5 which he has parked in reserves because he is doing fp oci under financial instrument standard so that 2 point that 2.5 is sitting in reserves on january 1 investor acquires a further 60% ownership interest in investor investee for 19 million cash they were obtaining control this includes control premium of 1 million at the date the fair value of investee's net identifiable assets is 12 million and the carrying values of those assets is 10 million investee's profit of 2 2000 of the year is 2 million so it says the fair value of non controlling interest that is 20% and fair value of original investments on the date of acquisition is 6 million so multiple things happening here <laughs> and this is uh, 
I think as we getting to lunch, this is getting too complicated. <laughs> but I think this is the last mile. Then we have a little lean stage, lean slide. So we just go through it uh, for the last few. So the impact is the net net. I think what this example is saying, the original investments that you had have to be revalued. So that 20% we talked about, right? Have to be revalued. Now under the present guidance under financial instruments, you are allowed, let's say if you have an investments, you can declare the available for sale. You can classify them as available for sale right. and you'll have to do a fair valuation periodically. That's right. So you have been doing fair valuation and the gain is sitting, gain loss is sitting in reserves. So what it is trying to say in a nutshell that all those gain losses that are sitting in reserves have to release to PNL because it's saying now control has happened. Now this is no more significant influence or anything of that sort. Now you are controlling the business. You've got another 60%. So all the residuary investments have to be at fair value. So you have anyway done the investment at fair value over the period, but the gain loss has not gone to PNL. It has gone to reserves. So it is saying remove that from reserves and take it to PNL. I think that's the sum and substance what we are talking about without getting too much complication into this. So they've built in a slide saying, you know, fair value of non-controlling is 20%. So minority, you could value, we said at fair value, you could value at proportionate value, right? So I think, that is what is getting built into this. But then some in substances, what we talked about, the amount that I already had has to be fair valued. And if it was not taken to reserves earlier, everything will go to PNL. It was taken to reserves earlier, it will flow through to PNL. That's the sum in substance when you change to from a non-controlling to a control situation. Okay. Correct. So in that case also, will no, no, no. So you've not got control. Okay. Another 10% doesn't give you control. So Though we're assuming that by getting 51%, I'm getting control. Again, you know, that is an assumption we've made because remember we said control is not linked to equity. But we said 51% has given me control and we'll talk about it more detail, but assume 51% gives me control. I have 20, I got another 10, nothing to which the transaction between shareholders, nothing has happened. The moment you get to 51, the moment you acquire 51, you got to 51%, whatever you had immediately has to be fair valued and goes to PNL. That's the sum and substance we are talking about. Till the point it is 20, 10, 40, nothing touches PNL. You know, you don't do this kind of accounting. It's just an investment that you're getting and you do a mark to market and take to reserves. But the moment it goes to 51, cycle back to PNL. Okay, so I'll just skip this for the time being. Okay, common control transactions. We talked about it in much more uh, earlier. A uh, significant change, uh, the appendix clearly lays down the accounting, which is not laid down in IFRS. So what is the common control we talked about it? A common parent, parent P, has two subsidiaries, S1, S2. S2 acquiring S1, in a normal situation, you would have said it's a business combination and do fair valuations and you know all those things we would have done. But here it is saying, nothing has changed from the group perspective. It's just one pocket moving to the other pocket. Nothing really changed. So any common control acquisition, you just do on a carrying value, pooling of interest method. You don't do fair valuations in that. There's no goodwill which will come in because this is just merging of two commonly controlled entities. So nothing changed from a shareholder perspective. He was the owner of S1, he's the owner of S2. Nothing at a group level has changed. So the important point is, it is irrelevant what is minority stake in that, whether minority is 10, 20, 30. So far as you have control, let's say you have 51% and you are having control, you have 51% in S1, you have 70% in S2. You are controlling them. So far as you are able to say it is control, I am controlling these two subsidiaries. Anything that happens within these subsidiaries, mergers, takeovers, are called common control transactions. How, you know, you don't do business combination accounting. Remember in the scope exception we said, the business combination is an exception. Common control is an exception to business combination accounting. Just do fair valuations, adjustments will go through reserves. Uh, account reserves, pooling of interest, like the way we do today in amalgamations, where we just pool together asset liabilities and the difference gets adjusted in reserves. This is just an example of what would be a common control. E limited, amalgamated with D limited, as we talked about. So, all assets liabilities of E and D come together at carrying values, no goodwill, no capital, all goes to reserves. So what is the key principles of pooling? 
assets and liabilities of the combining entities are reflected at their carrying